say, you guys are all going to stay in the same direction. I'm going to stay this way for a second. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we're in our swing. We, we're switching to the X Factor video. Okay. Oh, sweet. Is that enough light? I want to yeah. more light. Uh, I can lighten it. Yeah, thank you. Because I have a little LED light. Oh, no. I think it's fine. I kind of like the silhouette. I don't need to see it. <laughs> I didn't do my hair tonight. <laughs> Jen Healy always makes it. Oh. Thank you, Raspberry. So I can do it. Okay. <laughs> so you do no wrong. That is the light. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, so go behind the back. Yeah, underneath the both arms, like you're putting on a t shirt. Let's just do it nice and slow, like it's our first time learning. There you go, Raspberry. No rush, right? We're going to take a nice long extractor. Really see the benefit of it on all levels. So then we have this leg loop, leg loop, the outer leg loop. Push the outer leg loop away, get your elbows in there. There you go. They go on top of the shoulders, but we pull them. We pull them apart so they're going to stay more on the traps than on the, the cervical spine. Yeah, good. Now we keep pushing away and lifting the knees. So we slide that down first. We're going to start from the beginning. Oh. <laughs> Already happy. <laughs> the shoulders are just like, what? This is the spot, right? So the more the legs are engaged, right? We're pushing our feet down strongly to lift our hips and we know that connection in the body now. We're going to work more on the legs and feet and everything tomorrow. So we're going to do that. Squeeze your shoulder blades together a few times. Feel what happens with that pressure. And then chillax in arms. So chillaxin arms is supporting the head, pulling straight out so that the neck gets a little bit of space. We want to create space and openness around the stretch. Right? The head is back into your hands. The head in line with the body. Your head's not up. Your head's back in line with the body, taking on that curvature. You can think of yourself as a rainbow in all these poses. Beautiful. So do you like the swing higher? Right now we have the swing at the knees, guys. The swing at the knees. Oh, this is a pose. <laughs> so now we missed that. Yeah. All right. So then we're going to push you a little bit from side to side. So just let yourself, your hips shift from one side to the other and feel what happens. The leg loops of the shoulder. This obviously is working more of the upper back, but we're redoing that and we're getting ready and prepared to work the lower back. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is we just keep pushing our hips towards the sky. We let our feet dangle towards the floor. So if you push your hips up and bring your feet down, it's going to continue to slide up. Okay. So we slide up to below the bum. And then I want you to even try this part, which would be even would be more restorative and have it for you too with your people. You can spread the swing out over the bum. Okay, spread the swing out over the bum. Now when you push the swing away, it's a little bit easier to lift. Once you get your feet up there, and then you can pull the swing above the butt. Yeah, a little bit easier, yeah? Uh, yeah. For some of us. For some of us. <laughs> feet together, knees dead. Right? You're not holding on for two now. There you go. Then slide it above the butt. Yeah. <laughs> feet together, knees dead. We're not holding on with our toes, okay? Awesome. So this is our love bug. Let's do a few undulations here back and forth. So we're going to press our hips up, lean back, arch, and then exhale, tuck in, and roll in. Look towards your navel to stretch the back of the neck, chin to the chest. And then arch, press your hips up. Feel like that's, there's more pressure on the shoulders, right? Anytime you need to adjust, pull the leg hips apart, put them into that special spot just for you. Everybody's spot might be a little bit different. I'm going to make sure that the collarbones are happy. Oh, oh, this is so good. So good. And then let's go a little from side to side. Okay. So stay tucked in. Do you guys know the difference between the tuck and the arch now, right? Mm -hmm. Good. So now we're just going to wiggle from side to side. I'm being, bringing my elbow to the outer knee. And just feeling what happens with the twist. Always add a twist if you're in doubt. <laughs> In all the poses. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Feet together. 
Okay, so now the first move is we straighten our legs up. We can hook our feet. Okay, straighten the legs all the way. Reach up for the outer leg loop. So we don't ever touch the X in the middle. We reach for the outer leg loop when we pull ourselves up. So as we pull, we arch, and we get the leg loops positioned on the shoulders. We stay arched. Just make sure the swing is behind the back. There we go. Oh, in this position. Arch, yes. The legs are going to extend up and back to arch. They're not towards the ceiling, like straight up and down. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then hands are dangling towards the floor. And then in this position, we're going to just look over one shoulder and look over the other shoulder. Oh, just turn the neck. Not the whole torso, just the neck. See what happens. Beautiful, guys. Then after that, now we're going to twist with the entire torso. So one foot comes forward, one foot comes back. Keep the legs straight. Yes. And then we look over the shoulder. Keep arching. Oh. Julia, can you keep arching? Yeah. So arms are overhead raspberry, not out to the side. Okay. Remember the difference between those two. Okay, good. All right, let's just sit back down. Sit back down for the break. Ooh. Rounding here. Let this be one of the poses we do for cooling and rejuvenating the kidneys, right? Rolling it over against them side to side. The other one that I like to do again is like whenever I see pulse, that means we emulate the spine because it's a pulse here where we push our shins into the swing, lift our hips and lean back. So we're kind of wringing out that tension in the shoulders and then we just dive back in, rounding in towards our toes. So pulse a couple of times with the breath. Dig into the shoulders and then release that. Like wringing out a sponge. Beautiful, guys. Tons of different variations we can do here. We could try doing like a one leg situation. Bring one leg out, bring it back up. Bring the other leg out. We can get really creative with it. This is not in the teachings or manual, but it's obviously available to us to do one leg at a time. Like I said, when we're moving into our half lotus position. Lots of different variations you can do. So there's, this is just always just a taste of what I give you. Okay, so now you're going to watch me. Okay, I straighten the legs up again. Ready? Reach up for the outer leg loop. I immediately, when I come to sit, I have to switch to the swing to balance. Woo, hi. I was wondering if you guys have <laughs> Bing, bling. You can try to Oh, that's fine. I like it. Um, okay, so the leg loops have to come off. The shoulders and go around my waist, okay? Now we'll try and balance here so you can grab for your brakes. When you grab for your brakes, you're bending your elbows like they're on the inside. My fingers are pointing down and then I can lower myself down. Once I lower myself down, you get the girdle into a good position. Okay, okay once I'm here, I'm just going to hang and then we'll do some of our leg stretches, but I just want you to feel this amazing squeeze across the hips and what it's doing for the lower body and contractioning and opening up the hips. I don't know if I can come up again to show you that. Let me see. Here, let me climb up again. Okay, cool. I'm up. Oh, ding. Okay, so go ahead and pull yourselves up. Pull yourselves up, straighten your legs towards the ground. Wrap your legs, wrap your legs. Pull yourselves up and then come to sit. So once you pull yourselves up, you have to switch to the swing. Switch to the swing. Pull yourself all the way up. Keep your legs wrapped tight. I'll tell you step by step. Yeah. Straighten the legs. Pull yourself up. And then bend your knees so your feet come down towards the ground. Pull. Switch to the swing. Pull yourself up. Switch to the swing. Yep. <laughs> yep. Keep going. Pull yourself up. Yep. I need to slide this down. It's too far. It's Slide it up towards your, your waist. Oh, yeah, so I'll do, I remember you told me to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Take the leg out. There you go. Good job. 
Yeah, that will be a hindrance. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. So pull yourself up with the leg loops, and then once you're up, switch to the swing. So feet come down towards the ground, push your hips forward, pull. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now hold on to the swing. Yeah, pull yourself up. There you go. So once we're here, get the leg loops around the waist. Oh. Leg loops around the waist. Okay, just wait then. Okay? No, I'm going to do this. Well, don't strain with it because I'm already up here, honey. I'll show okay. you in a second. So now you have to use the brakes in front of you. Okay? Once you have the brakes in front of you, go ahead and lower yourself down nice and slow. Okay? Make sure, yep, you got it. Nice and slow. And if you want to help your person, you just come like this. Whee! Let your hands slide. Yeah. So, so you're, the, the key here is to bend the knees and press your hips. Press. Press with your hips. Okay. Press your hips forward. Put your hips forward wide. Yeah. And now switch to here. Hips, hips heavy. Push forward. Push forward. That's the pivot point in your hips. Not so much arm. Okay. Yeah. Now get this around your waist. Let's take a breath. Remember? Yep. Okay. Grab, whoop, grab your brakes. Yeah. One and two. And then lower yourself forward. Lower yourself, lower yourself forward. I got gotcha. you. Smooth jazz. I'm sorry. What was that, Bob? Am I in? You're in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One chiclet at a time. And then what I would like to do <laughs> is just get these on the pelvis so that they feel good. There you go. Don't move those long legs. There you go. I just position those so that it feels good, like even on the pelvis. <sighs> and then just hang out. Okay. You guys are good. And we're going to be here. We can do all of our stretches together. Feel free to spontaneously go into some of the stretches that we've learned if there's something that thrills you. <laughs> Once you guys get used to it, you can come in and out of it pretty quick, you know? But until then, take it nice and slow, step by step. Nice. There we go. <sighs> so we're using all the inversions as a restorative practice when we're doing the therapeutics. Does that make sense? So we hang out for longer periods of time in them. Even though they're intense, what we're looking for is maximum amount of space. Yeah, twist and twist, really nice guys. How can we get more space through the side body, more space through the ribs, just by letting gravity do all the work? It's kind of like when we're in standing splits and I keep telling you guys just to kind of relax into it, but it's so intense that it's hard to just sink. Well, eventually the legs will open up enough that in standing splits you can feel the entire body just starting to Lengthen and open. There you go. Yeah. Let's go ahead and try my favorite for the hip flexors, which is bending the knees and bringing your feet towards your bum. Then you can reach back, so feet on the outside. Bring your feet wide, yeah, and then towards your bum. And reach back for your ankles. Slightly pull your knees towards one another. Knees towards the sky. Yeah, that's it, Julia. And feel, so Bob, even more, pull your knees towards one another. Yeah, like that. And then feel what happens, even even more rest. Pull your knees towards one another. Yep. Up, and then pull. You're not going to fall out, I know. It seems like you're going to. Nice. So not too much, so you're engaged but relaxed. So you can feel how the front of the hip flexor gets an amazing amount of traction in this pose, more so than any other pose we do. Now see if you can relax into this so more space happens. Even if something that is intense as a back bend and a bow, when we relax into it, we can feel everything start to soften and open. Can so, you soften through your glutes? So are your inside of your knees pressing against the rib straps? Well, I'm not actually squeezing that hard. That's why I said engage but relax, because you pulled your knees in, but then you went into a contraction. So I want you to relax your glutes. See if you can relax your glutes. 
Miss Heather. So sometimes we could overcompensate, you know? We don't want to do too much or too little. They're both the same contraction. Beautiful, guys. So last one, we're actually going to push our feet away to create a bigger bow. Yeah, push your feet away. Keep holding on if you can. And then really feel the chest open up. Feel that length. So our legs, our knees are in alignment. Once our knees are in alignment, then we can really press, press, press and get the stretch. Beautiful. Now release. Ooh la la. Okay. Lower back should have been happy in that, right? So bow usually crunches the lower back. The lower back is long there. Come back into the wide straddle. It's going to be intense on the quads. Just enjoy the intensity. <laughs> okay. Hold behind the back of the knees at first. Hold on. Hold behind the back of the knees. Pull down. Yeah. Arch and open through the chest. Yeah. Not through the head, through the chest. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I love how you respond to me now. It's immediate. <laughs> what you got again? Engage the feet, so reflecting the toes back. Nice. This is such a simple pose, but just feel all that's happening here, right? Now, trying to reach for the toes might be too far for some people, but most people can reach behind the knees and still get the shape. Okay? Bob, in this one, try to keep your feet in alignment with your hips. What would that look like? Feet in alignment with the hips. Yes. That's a totally different pose, right? Yeah. Now you're not over-contracting right. somewhere. Beautiful, guys. Now if you want to reach for your toes, see if it's available to you now that you really got the space in the hip flexors to come into it. Bend the knees to begin, Heather, so you can grab both at the same time. <laughs> I know, right? Chase them down. And then once you're in bottom, then you can extend. There you go. Open up the chest. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Open up the chest and lengthen through the back of the neck. How does that work? Good job. Okay, release, come into a bada, just relaxed bada, so the feet can be towards the sky. It's just relaxed. Take your hands and press them onto your upper thighs and feel like you can get just a millimeter of space. Straight arms, straight upper thighs, straight arms. Beautiful. Can you guys feel that? What's happening in the QL there? It's amazing. It's just like, holy shimoli. Tiny little micro movements looking over one shoulder and then the other shoulder, but twist not just from the neck but from the entire torso. Nice, that's it. That's it, Charlie. Really nice. Feel the difference? Yeah. Now the whole spine is involved with the communication of that twist, not just the neck. Beautiful. All right. So, you're going to reach for your bum, then grab for the outer leg loop. Okay, the knees are already bent, but they actually need to come to the outside and then wiggle their way in just into that last leg loop. Yeah, so put, put your feet on the outside. Yeah, that's it, Julia. That's what, right there. Yes. Now when you pull, you're going to come to sit. So your butt comes down and your head comes up, and then you push the leg loops down to the knees and let the swing slide into the upper back. Et voila. Wow, it worked. It worked. <laughs> so now we're going to roll in and tuck in because we're focusing on this band of energy for this practice where we're um, communicating with the kidneys and how the kidneys are in relationship to the piriformis and the SI joint and the lower lumbar sacrum. Okay, so this whole area starts to communicate with one another in a new way since we're not bending here so much in all of our back bends. I'm going to see if I can turn around so I can face the camera. I may or may not be able to do it. I'm just teasing. Just gently. Don't mess up the baby. Okay, I'm back in. I was always like, how do I turn around? I got it. I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. You are amazing. You're yeah. like a human macrame. You know yeah. the macrame? I, yeah. I'm like, hold on, I think I can do it. Like, yeah, together. a human macrame. Almost the same. So, oh. mm -hmm. Almost the same, but different. But I'm very happy because now the camera's not looking at my butt the whole time. <laughs> what is that? Just saying. Okay, so now we can try to do all of the stretches that we were playing with today, but our knees are being squeezed together. 
This changes everything. It changes everything. So now our star, we have to push out, keep the hips really heavy, push out, and then it squeezes right back in, right? Such a different sensation in the body. And I like in this particular pose how much internal rotation that it gives me. So I'm always talking about internally rotating the thighs to spread the sit bones, to open up the sacrum. This does that for me. Mm -hmm. Can you guys feel that? Let's just come into a really basic forward fold. So I straighten the legs to keep the knees soft. And then in this pose, it's like a seated plow, right? So roll your chin into your chest, tuck in, and get a little bit more room and space for the kidneys. All right, hips are dropping. Beautiful, guys. So forward folds are really hard for people, so this is a nice way to let gravity do that work for us without overstretching the hamstrings, or overstraining them, I should say. Now in this pose, I do a lot of um, what I call freeze frame, where I kind of go back and forth and try to hold it. So I'm going to use my chillaxin arms, and it's like I'm pulling apart and using a different muscle group, and it's pulling me right back, right? So it's teaching us how to pull the energy back to the center line of the body, which is just so cool. So much symbology in that, because I'm always talking about coming back to center and back into alignment in itself. Because all the energy usually flails out, right? So now it's pulling it back in for me. So it's, a, it's the counter muscle group. Okay. So let's see if we can get, for you guys, it's going to be your left knee, on your left foot on top of the right knee. Awesome. Oh, so our seated pigeon feels a little different, wouldn't you say? It's already doing the hug for us. If we wanted to intensify that, we just wrap around and sink in. If you can feel what's happening here naturally as we're going right into Gomukhasana. Right? Gomukhasana, mm -hmm. where the knees are stacking. And if you want to grab to the feet, the feet are right there. Yeah. Amazing, right? Now feel what's happening in the hip. Breathe into it. Like I said, we're slowing it down and doing this long version. There's two versions that I do in all my practices. There's the heart, and then there's the head. So in some of these poses, I want you to feel like you can bow in. It's not just dropping your head, but it's bowing in towards the center and, and harnessing the energy in the core. That's different than just yanking on the head, right? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and straighten, we release, straighten the left leg up, right? And we're gonna do our twist like we did. So we're holding onto the foot, drop your hip even more, Heather, so it feels like your foot's closer. Remember, we, we pull that foot in to the hip crease so it feels closer. Yes, there you go. Now yeah, it doesn't seem so long. <laughs> and then we tee the arms, guys. So remember, we're twisting at the rib cage here. Yes, grab the foot. Yeah, beautiful, guys. Awesome. So why don't we just go for it and come into our can opener pose, right? So we get the foot back on top. We're going to press down strongly with that knee, even though it's lifted. Okay? And then we hold on to the swing. Oh, my God. <laughs> so good. So wiggle it into the low back. So don't disrupt the kidney energy when we just open that all up. Get it across the hips. I like and then, this. Yeah. So keep holding on with your left hand. Your right hand reaches back for the right foot. And now arch and open. Pull the foot away. Arch and open. So I want you, Bob, to focus on pulling that knee down, the right knee down towards the ground so that back hamstring on the right side stays engaged. I see. Okay? So the tailbone can drive down towards the knee. Awesome. So we're going to release and come to sit. Reach up with both hands before we come into second side. Relax. So, Bob, I want to talk a little bit about the tailbone, okay? So there's this version, we won't just call it a story, but a version where the tailbone gets tucked under, and then people are trying to untuck that. For me, the cure is to push the tailbone down towards the knees or down towards the heel. So it's not about tucking or untucking, it's actually about lengthening straight out. Okay, so I'm going to go over that one more time and what I mean. So the tailbone, even if it was tucked under a little, like we've been saying, we're pushing the tailbone straight towards the knee. Or straight towards the heel, so we're pushing the tailbone straight down, which has to do with the positioning of the sit bones, kind of spreading and opening up, which is this internal rotation, which is giving a little bit of space for the tailbone to push straight down. 
So then from the tailbone to the crown of the head, we can feel that long line of energy. So it's not about tucking or untucking. It's really about straight, straight down. Okay, I'm just extending my leg to accentuate it. But even with the, with the knee bend, we're pushing the tailbone down towards the knees. So it's this motion by this being engaged. Okay, so we're gonna try that on the second side. Okay, from Chilexa, let's just come in through our chill flow. Inhale, T, and then exhale, child. Inhale, blossom open for star, right? Long arms, long legs, open heart. Beautiful. Now let's see if we can come into second side from there because we're opening up the space, right foot on top. Now it's going to be different because of the X. Yeah. Like one side will be a little bit easier than the other. Depends on where you are, which one is easier. <laughs> but we're still there. We're good. Okay. So let's just go ahead and do a few twists and turns. I always like to wag the tail, I call it. So this foot is exploring in the space. I'm not wagging like this, <laughs> although some people do. It's okay, they're like a very happy dog. <laughs> Just wag the tail and feel what happens in the twist. And if we want to deepen in the pose, we can let one knee slide on top of the other knee and grab for the feet. Mm -hmm. So I would like to flex the feet and really pull in, lift the chest. So lifting the chest is one version, right? A little bit deeper into the hip, but then rounding is it in and is a different version. Two very important distinctions. Now this foot, this knee isn't going on top as much because of the leg loops, but it's okay. Right, we're getting the idea of it. And then let's go ahead and extend. Keep holding on and extend. Feel that version. So right leg straightens, left leg stays tucked in, but we're holding on like our teeth. There you go. Beautiful. And then if you want to release the foot, you try the two like this. From there, we make our transition. Nice, guys. So keep your head in line with your body, raspberry. Yeah, keep your head. <laughs> keep your wits about you. <laughs> Maybe that's what they call it. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and bend the knee. Let's slide right into our can opener. So this is really important. You're pushing this down, right? Strong. Push the tailbone towards the knee. So the tailbone is moving down this way. That means my hamstrings are engaged. And then I'm holding onto the swing to slide in. Bypass the kidneys, so you're right across the hips. Kidneys stay happy. Keep holding on with your right hand. Left hand grabs back of the foot. Open it up. Lots and lots of space. Reach up and grab for the swing with both hands. Keep the tailbone long towards the knee. And then as you lift, you help when your pelvis tilts down, right? So when your pelvis drops, your head comes up because you've got that nice long line of energy through the spine. So we're feeling that relationship between the tailbone and the crown of the head in all poses. We feel that a little bit more with just the emphasis. Beautiful, guys. Let's go ahead and release. Let's push the leg loops down to the ankles. I want us to try the wow position, right? So let's just come through our chillaxed arms and do a little bit of freeze frame from side to side just to feel the difference in this. If the leg loops are too high, it just means it's a little bit harder. We could always bring the leg loops down one before we come into X Factor to make it a little bit easier. But we just accept the fact that our legs are way higher than we're used to, right? So it's a bigger stretch. And then see if you can transition. You can use your hands if you need. See if you can transition to the leg loops on the arches of the feet. Okay. And same emphasis with the back of the hamstrings engaged, tail of the bone pushing down strongly towards the heels. As we lift up, we're going to grab for the actual leg loops, not the swing leg loops, right? So when we pull, we're going to go straight up and down but we still have that same engagement where the feet are pushing in strongly and that's going to allow us to arch and open, arch and open. We feel the whole back body working in this pose. Pull your shoulder blades together and down the back. You'll find the bottom tips of the shoulder blades coming in towards one another, even here. 
<sighs> so good. <laughs> All right. Come on back to sit. Switch to holding on to the swing. Legs squeeze together. Let's come to a ladle with that same so Bob watch me for a second. Pushing down strongly. Okay, they're not gonna go like this. Okay, pushing down strongly and coming in only as far as you can keep that engagement through the legs. So if your legs lax, come up and hold on higher so you can get that touch. And then arch it open and try it again. Tailbone going down towards the heels. So if you can find it here, you can find it anywhere. <laughs> right, you guys pushing? Everybody, yes, no, maybe? Yes. <laughs> Did I hear everybody say yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, Jen, sure. Just as long as you can't see me. <laughs> <laughs> Push your hands down into the ground if you can let go and come into your hands again. Whoa. Your feet down strongly. Oh my gosh. Big back then. Whoa. Whoa. That's why we call it from wow to whoa. <laughs> yep. Whoa, that's nice. Arch. Arch, push your feet down strongly. Uh, Engage the back of the hamstrings. Uh, Tailbone drives down towards the heels. The sit bones are spread so there's room. Room there. Beautiful, guys. Okay. Go ahead and release. Come back down for the swing. Have the sits. Beautiful. Nice. So I want you to stay, Bob. I want to watch you in that one and see how you did. <laughs> 